I have a huge update on the Texas border battle. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis jumps into the fight against Biden and the White House, as well as South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem. She has a huge update that's pretty scary that absolutely must be dealt with. Plus, Donald Trump gets a big update. Also, Vladimir Putin of Russia shows evidence that Ukraine blew up their own prisoner of war airplane. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. Something is going on in the USA versus Donald Trump legal court case. The Now, this could be that uh, Jack Smith is being investigated for being illegally appointed to investigate a former president without congressional approval. It could be something that Judge Chutkin is seeing. We don't really know. Either way, as of right now, it has been removed from the court's calendar. Likely it has something to do with a specific ruling that they are waiting for when it comes to uh, former President Donald Trump. So I'll continue to monitor that and let you guys know more about it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I see the comments over here. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much. Oh, I love your videos. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me keep going on this. Now, earlier today, Volvo announced that they will no longer plan on focusing on all electric cars. They say it's killing their business model and their sales are dropping. Upon announcing this news, Volvo stock jumped 20% in a single day. And I'm over here thinking, dang, I wish I owned Volvo stock, but man, 20% jump just by saying they're going back to gasoline cars. Now, the Federal Communication Commission is starting its fight against a new threat scamming the American people using AI-generated robocalls. Scammers have been stealing popular voices, such as President Joe Biden, to advance their own agenda. For instance, residents got an automated call from the robotic president, Joe Biden, who told them, don't go out and vote in New Hampshire. You do not need to go out and vote. Now, the FCC chair, Jessica Rosenworcel, is now leading the effort to make this practice illegal. She stated, no matter what celebrity or politician you favor or what your relationship is with your kin when they call for help, it is possible we could all be the target of these fake calls. Now, I didn't mind them calling and saying, don't go vote for Joe Biden, but we definitely don't want them calling the White House saying, launch nuclear missiles or something crazy like that. So this is something that absolutely has to be uh, resolved. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has finally admitted that uh, not informing key individuals, including the President of the United States, that he was undergoing a cancer treatment was a bad move. During a Pentagon briefing, General Austin expressed regret for the oversight, emphasizing his responsibility and offering apologies to his team, to the President and the American public. His absence coincided with Joe Biden being on vacation for the 150th time raise temporary national security issues and more. Now, General Austin, who preferred privacy over public disclosure of his health struggle, acknowledged that he should have been more transparent, especially when it comes to somebody that high in government leadership positions. Now, this same day, General Austin also made it abundantly clear that he is back to work. Almost immediately, General Austin placed his focus on the upcoming response to the Iran-backed militia who killed three American soldiers and injured many more. He stated, time to take away even more capability than we've taken in the past. They have a lot of capability and I have a lot more. Now, the United States has announced that they have a plan in place for how they want to attack Iran, uh, but there are some that are still investigating whether Iran was really involved. So. I, I really hope that they will figure out exactly who was behind the attack on the Syria-Jordan border because we definitely don't want to just be attacking Iran um, out of no reason because we could end up in World War III. 
And we definitely do not want that at all. Now, according to Axios, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is reportedly fighting for the State Department to recognize Palestine's statehood after the war in Gaza. Now, to me, this signals an interesting departure from America's pro-Israel ideals as the United States has previously opposed weighing in on making Palestine an official state. Now, funny enough, this move may backfire against the Biden administration as it seems to be helping Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, in the polls. As the war continues to uh, chug along, it seems the Israeli people are becoming more opposed to how America thinks they should run their country. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll stop sending them $2 billion a year. All right. Now, to be honest, if we were uh, invaded by a neighboring country, I would likely feel the same way. Think of this. The war isn't even over, and Hamas is reportedly already returning to northern Gaza to assert their authority and dominance over the Palestinian people. Israeli National Security Advisor Eyal Hulata stated, we are hearing more, unfortunately, of the recovery of insurgency in both central and northern Gaza. We're hearing more and more that Hamas uh, are doing policing in northern Gaza and governing trade, and that is a very bad outcome. In fact, it's gotten so bad that the Times of Israel has indicated that Hamas is hijacking about 50% of all of the trucks that are trying to get aid into Gaza in the first place. And this has been one of the biggest complaints about helping the people of Palestine is that the government of Hamas continues to steal supplies and money and resources and food and water. And now that Israel has pulled back, what do they do? They immediately start stealing from the people of Palestine that are desperately in need of help and supplies. So it's really sad to watch. Okay, now speaking of invasions, I have a great update on the southern border situation. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, is back to Florida after dropping out as a presidential candidate. This week, he has announced that he is sending Florida's National Guard to Texas to assist in its efforts to stop the invasion at the southern border. He said, we have no country if we do not have a border. Now, furthermore, he's going to, in addition to sending National Guard, he's going to be sending more razor wire, uh, more supplies. Uh, basically, Joe Biden is saying that as president of the United States, he has no authority, no executive authority to do anything. And so Ron DeSantis is saying, well, Florida is a border and we have authority. So we're going to use that to go and protect the country and specifically to go and protect uh, Texas. So they are sending that over and hopefully that will continue to slow down uh, the caravans of people that have been coming in at between five to 15,000 people per day. So this is really great news coming from Florida and also from Ron DeSantis. Now, I have some bad news regarding the border situation. Republican governor for South Dakota, Kristi Noem, told Newsmax today that the drug cartels in Mexico are starting to set up their business on tribal reservations in the state of South Dakota. Now, what they figured out is that this land is protected from federal government jurisdiction because the Native Americans control that. They have their own police, things like that. Now, she's saying even though South Dakota isn't a neighboring state of Texas, we are now on the front line with Texas and she wants to get involved. She's saying that she has nine Native American tribes in South Dakota. And unfortunately, the cartels are trying to infiltrate the Indian reservations. They're facilitating drug trafficking, human trafficking, and they're harassing the uh, tribal people. And so she's saying, we've got to shut this down. We've got to protect our people. Now, the Department of Justice and the federal government uh, do have some jurisdiction over reservations, but as of right now, they say they don't want to be involved. And so literally 
this problem at the border and in Texas is becoming a, a, a border problem everywhere. Uh, so it's like uh, Governor DeSantis says, if we don't have a border, we don't have a country. So the drug cartels are now trafficking people in and out of the U.S. interior as they strengthen their operation and continue to add billions and billions of dollars to their bottom line. It's just, it's just absolutely horrific. All right. Now, another kind of sad update is the mayor of Denver today announced that Denver is at a breaking point. In order to honor their commitment of being a sanctuary city, they took in 40,000 illegal immigrants. They say that they are running out of welfare programs. They are running out of money. They're running out of supplies, medical supplies, food, housing, hotels. The, ho the uh, hospitals are absolutely overwhelmed. And the mayor of Denver is, be is begging Joe Biden for a bailout. And he's basically hearing crickets. They're not responding. They're not helping. And so uh, the, the mayor of Denver is saying, listen, we are being completely overrun. We don't know what to do. Now, as Americans in Congress struggle to rub two pennies together to aid Ukraine, the European Union has stepped in and approved $54 billion in aid. Now, initially, they had pushback from Viktor Orban, the leader of Hungary, but the deal was finalized after they threatened to remove financial aid to the country of Hungary as well. Now, even though Zelensky did express gratitude, immediately he stated, unfortunately, the implementation of the European plan to supply 1 million artillery shells to Ukraine is being delayed. And this too is a signal of global competition in which Europe cannot afford to lose. Now, I've been covering the Russia-Ukraine war on my channel for you for almost 18 months, and I've noticed a pattern with Zelensky. He says thank you, but then immediately starts complaining that nobody is doing enough and that he's doing everything on his own. And so it just, it, it's really kind of sad. Um, it, it, it's really sad. So anyway, um, I, I just don't know what to do. I mean, it's a humanitarian crisis at this point. Now, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, has continued to argue that Ukraine did in fact shoot down a Russian aircraft carrying 65 Ukrainian prisoners of war back to Ukraine. But this time, Putin also seemed to partially blame the United States for the disaster. They said that they have evidence that Ukraine used the U.S. Patriot missile defense system to shoot down the Russian plane. While Russia's own investigation committee did release video footage proving that Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian prisoners of war were in fact on board, Ukraine is now saying the quality of the video is too low quality. And so they're going to continue to put forward the story that Russia shot down this airplane. Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. Before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Make sure to check out the videos around here before you leave YouTube. But before you go, I just want to acknowledge the people that are here with me tonight and say hello. Denver needs to declare a state of emergency. Hello from South Carolina. Michael, David, James, Jessica, Lisa, Lisa, Tony, hello. So it's good to be with you guys tonight. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on in the country right now, and uh, I hope you guys appreciate these updates on what's happening in Washington, D.C., and also what's happening in Chicago, New York, uh, Baltimore, Florida, stepping in to help. Uh, th this is all really big stuff. Um, and so I just want to keep you guys up to date on everything that's going on. Uh, unfortunately, it feels like our country is absolutely being overwhelmed. Uh, I am convinced that this is all on purpose. And uh, look at look at what is going on. Uh, these these sanctuary cities they're being absolutely overwhelmed. They don't know what to do. They don't have the resources to help people. Um, so it's it's really really bad. At the same time, don't miss today's earlier 
uh, news uh, interview where we go through exactly what's happening in Chicago and New York and Baltimore and uh, other major cities. Hello, everybody. It is getting out of control, Rochelle. It's really sad. Uh, blessings to you as well. I'm so glad you love the show. Stephen Gardner, master of the news. Oh, thank you so much. That's, that's really kind of you. Yes, it is done on purpose. I agree. God bless. God bless. Oh, wow. Say hi to Casey. I will. Hi, Lisa. She's probably on here. Florida checking in. Big update on Florida. Hi, Danny. I've been watching you. Let's see. Oh, man, this is moving really, really fast on my end. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I'm going to jump off to go have dinner. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I Seriously, uh, you guys support the channel. Please uh, share this with other people. The bigger this gets, the bigger the guests are. I couldn't start getting these incredible guests until you guys helped me get to a million people. So if you'll commit to helping me continue to grow, I'll commit to bringing on the very best of the best and bringing you guys the truth every single day. Hey, thanks so much. One more reminder, you guys are amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your evening.